Hi students, welcome back. This is plus 2 computer application part 6 video. Before getting into the video, please do subscribe. In this class, you will be learning about MySQL. So, let's quickly check the learning objectives. Yes, we'll start with an introduction and then MySQL administration. And we'll see how to install this MySQL. At the same time, we will see the administration responsibilities and administrative MySQL commands. Let's start with an introduction. Okay, MySQL is an open source relational database management system. And yes, we have discussed a lot about relational database management system. And the founder's name is Monty Widenius. And he named this system as MySQL because his daughter name is My. And he included SQL also, that is structured query language. So the name of this system is MySQL. And look at this picture. Yes, he is the founder of MySQL. Now let's see the definition. A database is defined as the structured collection of data. For example, photo gallery is a database which has collection of photos. Yes, photo also comes under data. In your phone, you can check the gallery. All the photos will be well organized. Yes, we do have photo folders like camera roll, WhatsApp image, WhatsApp videos and saved pictures, downloaded pictures. Everything will be well organized. So look at the example and this is about database we know that data is collection of raw facts raw facts means it can be name of a person place numbers pictures videos audio everything so here database means structured collections of data so let's see what is structured query language that is sql it is not a database it is Query language. It is used to communicate with the database. So, SQL is not a database. It is a query language, structured query language. And it runs on multiple platforms like Windows, Linux. Platform means operating system. And it is also scalable, reliable and fast. And then overview of web database. So, web database means the database which supports web applications. They are called as web database. There are so many web database in that you look at the overview. MySQL is mainly used at is 44 percentage is used in web applications. So this is the most popular web database. Then most commonly used databases. They are database 2 that is DB2, MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL. SQLite, SQL Server, Sybase. So all these are the commonly used databases. So in this chapter you will be learning about MySQL. So let's check how to install the software first. So we have to download XAMPP server. So before downloading you have to check one thing that is whether your system is 32 bit processor or 64 bit processor. So accordingly you have to download. This is for 32 bit processor. So you have to double click on this. You will get this setup dialog box. So you have to make a click on this next button. So you will get the next dialog box. Here by default everything will be enabled. And once again you are supposed to make a click on this next button. So you will get the next dialog box. So in this dialog box you have to select this path. By default it will be set. This is the location where the software is going to be installed. What you have to do is just make a click on this next button. And then you will get the next dialog box. It will ask you for the confirmation ready to install. What you have to do just make a click on this next button. Then automatically you will get this installing page. As it gets finished, you will get this dialog box. Here you are supposed to make a click on this finish button. Then we are ready to use this software. We have to enable two service that is Apache for PHP and MySQL. You have to make a click on this start button so that the next admin button will be enabled. Look at this. 
so both we are going to learn both that is php and mysql in this video we are going to check only about mysql so you have to double tap on this admin button you will get the url opened in a browser to access mysql databases so look at this page we do have databases and these are the database names information schema mysql all these are the default databases you can select any database or you can create database so to create you will tap on this button and you have to give the name for the database so this part we will learn in the next class now moving on to the next topic that is mysql administration so let's check the administration responsibilities so in general there exists a role known as database administrator so one administrator will be there who takes care of configuration installation performance security and data backup database administrators are responsible for creating new user accounts to mysql so database is used to create tables and to maintain all the datas but here at the very beginning we have to create the user account and password for new users that details is also maintained in the mysql databases so by default there is a table named user so this user table holds the details of new user and existing user their name and the password and also the privileges provided to them and finally after creating user account that is username and password the new user will be provided with various rights that is they can insert data select the data or they can update the data all the features will be available for the new users and now let us check the privileges provided by mysql to all the users so first one is select privilege if it is yes then the user can select a row from the database tables and insert privilege so if it is yes user can insert row insert row means one person's detail they can add in the table update privilege so user can update the row that is existing row any changes if they want to make they can do it delete privilege if it is yes they can delete a row and create privilege if it is yes then the user can create new tables and finally alter privilege so if it is yes user can make any changes to the database structure database structure in the sense for example let us take a table if a table is holding only four columns you can increase the number of columns or you can decrease the number of column and also you can change the data type for every single columns that is called as alter privilege so look at this table this is user table so i already told you for every new user those who are willing to access this mysql they have to get username and password so this is username and the password this will be provided and all the privileges they will set yes or they can set it as no this is the work of database administrator so they have to insert all the users detail like this so moving on to the next topic that is administrative mysql commands so first of all you have to enable this command uh, that is mysql application you have to double tap so you will get this mysql window so this is the command prompt here we are going to type the commands so first let us check how many databases are there in this uh, mysql by default so what we have to type is we have to type show database so you have to type in plural form databases so that you will get after typing press enter you will get the default database so information underscore schema test these two are the default databases present in this mysql so either you can create a database or you can use the existing database so creating database we will see in the next class now let us check how to use the database we have to simply type use and the name of the database so these are the 
command use and the name of the database then press enter automatically you will get database changed which means now we have entered into this test database and what we have to do next let us check how many tables are there in this test database so check it look at this we have entered into test database now let's check how many tables are created in this database so you have to type show tables and keep semicolon press enter so automatically you will get the name of the tables by default we do have only one table here and the name of the table is sports look at this one row in set so now we can check the number of columns present in this particular table so the command used for that is show columns from sports from which table sports table so let us check you have to press enter so it will display the column names so look at this these are the field names team id team name team size and team rank so totally four columns are there in this particular table that is sports table so let us clear the page now let us check how many rows are present in this particular table that is sports table for that we have to use the command select select command is used to select the rows from the table so you have to give the command as select star from sports so table name you should write here press enter it will display the table so look at this we do have two rows okay so all the columns are present and we do have only two rows in this table you can check the number here two rows in set so this is the way to get the details from the table now if you want to insert a row into the table what we can do yes there is a command for that it is called insert command look at this insert into sports this is the name of the table and you are supposed to write all the column names look at this team id first column and team name the next column then team size then team rank and for all these columns what are the values you are going to provide so you should write the next word as values open the bracket and write the details all the number column you can give number and string you have to give in single quotes so team id is 9 name team name is pop and team size is 12 and team rank is 4 you have to separate it by comma and keep semicolon press enter so you will get the message query ok one row affected which means one row is inserted if you want to check whether it is inserted or not what you have to do you have to view the table to view the table we have to give select command so once again select star from sports if you just type this and press enter automatically the table will be displayed yes look at this three rows can you see the message three rows so these are the basic commands in the next class we will check all the commands in detail let's quickly get into the recap so in today's class we have learned about mysql and its administration and how to install mysql and the administration responsibilities and finally we have discussed a few comments that is administrative mysql comments that's all for today thank you